Welcome to The Truth. This week on The Truth, Billy discusses how friends can be involved in miracles. The Bible shows us that friends can play a role and help you get a miracle. But not just any friend will do. We need to have friends who are godly, friends who have faith and move with action because they are willing to help. When you need a miracle, take time to surround yourself with faithful friends. And remember, others are looking for the same thing. They're looking for you to be a faithful friend. The truth is, friendship can play an important role when it comes to miracles. Okay, so here's the scripture. Are you ready? One day Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village, Galilee, and from Judea and Jerusalem. Notice who he's teaching. He's teaching a bunch of people who don't like him. Okay? How many of you have somebody in your life they don't like you? Come on, just raise your hand. Tell the truth. How many are sitting beside that person right now? Just raise your hand, okay? How many have been married to that person too long? Okay, and you're, the only scripture you have is till death do us part. Okay, so. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on the mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, what, why didn't he say, you're healed? Because he gave this guy a bigger miracle than healing. Having your sins forgiven, that's eternal. Being able to walk is temporary. Some of us, we don't understand, but we're putting the temporary in front of the eternal. When you put the eternal in front of the temporary, the eternal always glorifies God and then the temporary he will bless. You understand? Some of us, we just got it messed up. Now watch this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked. Why are you thinking these things in your heart, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately, the guy, he stood up in front of them. He took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things. I am just blown away with this story. I'm blown away with this story. If I asked you right now, and I asked every one of you individually, confidentially, if you need a miracle, probably everyone in this room needs a miracle. Small miracle, big miracle. But if I asked you how many of you have a godly friend who would do this for you, probably 90% of us would say, I don't think I have one. This paralyzed guy had probably four friends. When they got up on the roof, they, they, they didn't own this house. They took the tile off the roof. They probably took three or four tiles off the roof. And then the four of them, probably four or two huge guys, put ropes on the mat and lowered him down. How many of us have a godly friend that when we hear from the doctor we have cancer, we know this friend is going to be with us and help us get a miracle? Looking for more information about Church on the Queensway? Well, check us out online at thechurch.to. There you can find sermon videos, event updates, and so much more. We'd love for you to follow us on Facebook, where you can stay connected with live updates, sermon videos, and event information. To like our page on Facebook, simply go to facebook.com slash thechurch.to. We hope you find out more information and get connected to Church on the Queensway. Most of us have friends like this. 
Hi, the doctor told me I have cancer. Oh, how long do you have to live? I mean, that's not a friend to me. I don't want them to say, how long do you have to live? I want them to say, you will not die. I want them to say, which tiles do you want us to rip off the house so we can get... See, the, cr the whole crowd is full of Pharisees and teachers and, and people who do not believe. And yet these guys, they can't push their way through the crowd. Like, see, the lady who was sick for 12 years, she could push her way through the crowd. This guy is paralyzed. He's, how many of you have ever been in a situation where you had no strength at all and you needed a friend? I only have two points today. They're long ones, though. Here it is. Number one, I need to be a friend. Get a friend who will help you get a miracle. I need a friend. I need a friend. I need a friend who, number one, is godly. And when I mean godly, it just doesn't mean that they're a Christian, Jesus is Lord. I mean somebody who discerns the Holy Spirit. Somebody who has the ability to be able to do what obedience to God. I need a friend who, through thick or thin, or high and low, it doesn't matter. That friend is there. It's not lip service problem with, with the church today, and I'm part of the church, so I'm part of the problem, is we shoot our mouths off. Oh, I'll be praying for you. Well, could you help me? No. I'll just pray for you. I'll stay behind and pray that God will bless you. I'll be the prayer warrior standing in the gap behind. We use all these cliches. We need a friend who is godly. Number two, under this, I need a friend. We need a friend who has faith. When they're ripping the tiles off, you could see people saying, what are you doing? We have faith. If we lower, Jesus never said, if you lower him down, I'll pray for him, he'll be healed. Jesus never said anything. These guys pushed Jesus to get a miracle. Somebody says, is it right to push Jesus to get a miracle? Well, let me ask you something. Jesus' mother, when she, he, she turns to him and says, we've run out of wine, you need to make wine. And he says, mother, my time has not come. She turns to the servants and she says to the servants, yo, whatever he tells you to do, do. She pushed Jesus. Looking for information about Church on the Queensway? Then visit us online at www.thechurch.to. It's a great place to make online donations, view sermon videos, and get news about upcoming events. That's all online at thechurch.to. I need a friend. Get a friend who will help you get a miracle. A friend must be willing to help. Not lip service. <laughs> Your actions speak louder than word. And the last one I give to you, a friend must be faithful. Not drop out at the 11th hour, but go all the way. You know how many of us, we are that close to gaining a miracle, but we don't have a friend who will help push us through? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I wanted to have three boys. I only had two. And the reason is Shelly wouldn't go along with me. I wanted to call the first kid Shadrach, the second Meshach, and the last one Abednego. And she said to me, no, kids aren't called that today. They're just called normal names like yellow and blue, and north, and south. I mean, can you imagine walking into your high school? Hi, I'm Meshach. This is Shadrach. And that's a Bendigo. And we're not Jewish. I mean, you got that, is that cool? Hey, did you ever notice that Jesus always traveled and ministered with friends called disciples? Did you ever notice that? Did you ever notice when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't go alone, he took friends. Did you notice that in the Garden of Eden, Adam is running around naked? And Jesus said, let me give you a friend so she can run around naked with you. Her name is Eve. 
for those who are watching on TV, not Steve, Eve. <laughs> No bulletproof vest, no bulletproof vest, no bulletproof vest. <laughs> Point two, I need to be a friend. It is absolutely rude for you to expect God to give you a friend who's like this without first being a friend who is that. Become a friend who will help people with a miracle. You must be godly. You must be led by the Holy Spirit. These guys were led by the Spirit of God. But you know, the paralyzed guy's lying there. We can't get in there, guys. Just take me back to my house. No, we're going up on the roof. What are you going to do? Guys, you're going to drop me. I know you're going to drop me. Well, you know, you can't walk now. It's not like you're going to not, you know. And all you're going to do is land on a bunch of Pharisees and Sadducees. Might kill a few of them. It's a win-win situation. Let's do it. See, the whole thing is being led by the Spirit. You want to know something? The best friends I have are friends who are led by the Holy Spirit. Pastor Ed, it's his birthday today. He's 24 years old. Don't clap for him. He's not here. He's somewhere else in the church. I have no idea what he does in between services. <laughs> Crooksy, you'll agree with me. He's spooky. <laughs> He'll come into my office. No, I'm not kidding. He's spooky. See, and somebody says to me, you know, do you believe in ghosts? Yes, the Holy Ghost. He'll come into my office. he says, say, the Holy Spirit just told me Da, 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 da. I'll go, Ed, how did you know that? That's confidential. The Holy Spirit just told me. I mean, seriously. It's hard to sit around this church with Ed around. I mean, Ed just knows. Here, here's the craziest thing. I would give my right arm for a friend like Ed. who's spirit-led. But see, that's what I need to be. If I want that, then I need to be that. Now watch this, are you ready? You must have faith. Not, not oh, I have faith. No, show it. Don't, don't tell me you have faith. Show your faith. Faith without works is dead. You're watching The Truth. Have you ever had questions understanding the Bible? We all have. Well, we're here to help. Each Sunday, The Truth TV aims to reveal God's truth in your life. Join Pastor Billy Richards Sunday mornings as he teaches biblical messages that have an application designed for you. So we invite you to join us right here on this station for The Truth TV, revealing God's truth in your life. Watch this. You must be willing to help. You must be faithful to God, to your friends, and to yourself. Now watch this. Being faithful to God is mean you are walking in his obedience. Being faithful to a friend is walking in God's obedience. Being faithful to yourself is not walking in your obedience, but walking in God's obedience. So, I was at camp this week hearing one of my friends preach because he's a very close friend of mine and he wanted me to hear him speak. So, but the point is this, he told great stories. And Jesus was a storyteller and I want to be like Jesus. So I said to him, do you know I'm speaking about this on Sunday and you've given me all the stories. Are you ready for three stories? One of them is not politically correct. It doesn't matter, I'm going to tell it. He was pastoring in San Francisco. Every Sunday, there were two people from the gay movement who sat at the back. 
And every Sunday when he finished sermon, he, these two gay people would come down and look at him and say, Pastor, your sermon was acceptable to the gay community today. Congratulations. And then they would leave. Every Sunday did that. This one Sunday he was preaching from God's Word. Did you hear that? Not the Supreme Court, God's Word. And all of a sudden, these two individuals walked down and said, your sermon is not acceptable. Next Sunday we will be picketing outside your church. Storm. This is a Sunday where they're going to have water baptism. This is a Sunday where lots of non-Christians have been invited to the church to see people get water baptized, testimony, so forth, salvation message, hoping people come to know Jesus. And the following Sunday, he's looking out his office, and all of a sudden there are hundreds of picketers outside protesting this church. This church is not politically correct. This church... See, here's the problem, okay, and here's the truth. We believe in the Son of God and the Bible. And so the pastor is in his office looking out there and going, oh, Jesus. And all of a sudden the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God. All of a sudden... He doesn't know, but another friend of his is getting water baptized. And that friend's in the church looking out and saying, God, I've invited all my friends. Could you get rid of the picketers? See, the pastor doesn't know this, but the guy who's being baptized in water is his friend saying, Can, well, here's the thing. The guy who's getting baptized in the, the, the water, he just got saved two months ago, he's one of the leaders of the mafia in San Francisco. <laughs> now, he's invited all the mafia because there's only two ways you can get out of the mafia. Number one, in a bag, cement, lake. <laughs> or number two, a religious experience that the mafia believe is a religion. So he's invited all his friends from the mafia to watch him get baptized in water. So the mafia guy who's saved now looks out and sees the pickers. He doesn't understand. He goes, Jesus, get rid of them. My friends are coming. And all of a sudden the pastor's looking out the window and he looks down the road and there's a line of black car limousines coming down the road. And I'm, he said, not one or two. He's telling me lots of limousines. The first limo steps out, these security guys for the mafia. They step out, earpieces, guns, everything, suits on, and they look at the picketers. The picketers are like. <laughs> the second limo show up third, and all of a sudden now the mafia leaders get out with their bimbos. And they got guns, and all of a sudden the picketers put their signs down and they start running. The mafia goes in, and the pastor baptizes these people in water. And then at the end of the sermon, he gives a salvation altar call, and people come to know Jesus. Why? Well, see, if you're isolated or you're an island, God never made it that way. He made it. To have friends. Visit our new website. Log on to www.thechurch.to to make online donations, view sermon videos, and get event news at Church on the Queensway. In the second story he told, oh, it was so good. I wish this would happen to me. He's sitting in his office one day at the church. And all of a sudden, the phone rings. And one of the ladies on the phone, she says, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. And she's crying. She says, my husband just died. I found him in bed dead. I phoned EMS, the ambulance. They've just come. They've just pronounced him dead. They're about to take him to the coroner's. Could you pray that he comes back to life? No, I'm sorry, if that, I would go, we're breaking up. What? Oh, 
lost you. The pastor sits there and all of a sudden being led by Holy Spirit said, sister, tell them to leave the body alone. The Holy Spirit just talked to me. Let's pray, you and I. You and I are friends. In the name of Jesus, put your hand on your husband right now. And she says, just one sec. Guys, could you move back so I could just, thank you. She puts her hand on her husband. Jesus, heal my, oh, bring him back to life. Oh, he's dead? He's not going, pastor, they're telling me he's not coming back to life. Tell them they're wrong. They're wrong. You're wrong. Jesus, heal my husband right now. And pastor says, in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden the guy goes, ah, and he sits up, EMS runs out. <laughs> no, no, I'm not joking. EMS comes back. They had their chart dead. They had to scratch it out. They took him to the hospital. They discharged him three days later. Now, let me tell you the rest of the story. He never told this in camp meeting. He wanted to, I told him, you didn't tell the rest of the story in camp meeting. The guy who was dead owned a Lincoln car lot. And a week later, the pastor got a brand new Lincoln. <laughs> if you own a Ferrari car lot, and you die, phone me. I guarantee you, you will come back. You know how many phone calls I'm going to get? Let me give you my phone number, 967-1111. My name is Pastor Pepperoni. <laughs> Are you ready for the third story? Well, I gotta look it up, I forgot it. Oh yeah! <sighs> His best friend lives 200 kilometers away from him. His best friend's not serving the Lord. His best friend phones him on a Saturday night and says, hi, I want to come to church tomorrow morning. I'll drive the 200 kilometers. I want you to lead me to Jesus. And, and my friend who's pastoring church knows there's a big storm coming. Usually they close down their church because they're, they're bad storms where they, he pastors. And he says, well, we're thinking, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit speaks to him, says, don't you close down, that guy's getting saved. So he says, okay, you come. He says, just so you know, I believe God will help you. And all of a sudden he gets off the phone and the Lord says, what do you mean you just believe God? Your friend has to come through a storm 200 miles to get to your church so you can lead him to Christ. Take authority and get the storm to move. So my friend all of a sudden looks at the weather map on TV and goes, in the name of Jesus, I come against the storm let my friend drive on dry roads. Now listen to this. If this is where his friend lived, and this is where the church is, friend, church. The storm came and it went around his house. He drove 200 kilometers on dry roads. The storm stayed with him as he was driving, but out of his way. And when he got to the church, the storm came in and hit the other side of the church. No lie. That's the weather map show that. He came to church and accepted Christ. Now, here, here's the question. Oh, I, you know, I, I want a friend like this if I ever was diagnosed with cancer. Hello? I want a friend like this before I get diagnosed with cancer. Why? Because that kind of friend is going to help bless me that friend is going to help get me closer to Jesus. See, Jesus never made us losers. Jesus made us winners. Jesus never made us to be low. Jesus made us to be high. Now, I'm not going to have a friend like that just because I get diagnosed with cancer. I'm going to have a friend like that now before I get diagnosed. But before 
And listen to me, before you can get a friend like that, God is calling you to be that friend. God is calling you to be the friend who is godly, who has faith, who is led by the Holy Spirit, who helps, who has, who has the ability to be faithful to the obedience of God. What you sow, you reap. And God is calling you to be a friend. Not next year, today. Every one of us in this room, every one of us in this room knows somebody who is in trouble and needs a miracle. Hello. Thank you so much for watching The Truth. I want to show you something that's changed my life. I have a very close friend in Montreal. His name is Claude Hood. He has the largest church in Quebec. It's incredibly large. It's over 4,000 people attend every Sunday. He just finished writing a book called Increase Your Faith. And this book has really changed my life. And what I want to do is ask you if you could help support the program today, The Truth. Now, if you financially can't, don't worry about it. But if you can help us today by sending us a donation of $25 or more, what we want to do is send you this book free by Claude Hood, Increase Our Faith. Now, let me just share this with you. This book has really changed my life. But the second thing I'm asking for is if you could help us financially because we believe the program is changing lives also. So here, here's the deal. If you phone us and the lines are busy, that means all our prayer counselors and our phone counselors are, are on the lines. Keep phoning until you get through. Or phone us during the week when the office hours are from 8.30 to 4.30 Toronto time. The second thing I want to say is this. If you want to go online and donate, you can. When you go online to donate, make sure you mention in your donation, Increase Our Faith or the Truth television program. Hey, listen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Remember one major thing, one major thing out of everything. Jesus loves you. Jesus is not a religion. He is a relationship. And Jesus loves you with all his heart. Second thing I want you to know is we at Church on the Queensway would love you to come and visit us on a Sunday. We would love you to be part of us. Matter of fact, after service, please come up and introduce yourself to us. As I travel across Canada and the United States, people are always coming up saying, your show touched my heart. By the way, I just want you to know, we love you very much. God bless you. See you next week. Church on the Queensway. A great place for everyone. Invite you to join us on Sundays for our traditional service at 9.30 a.m. You can also join us for our non-traditional service each Sunday morning at 11.11 a.m. And if you're looking for somewhere to go Sunday nights, join us at 6 p.m. in the chapel. That's not at all. Friday nights is our family night, and it all gets started at 7.30 p.m. each Friday night. If you need more information, check out our website for sermon videos, online donations, and more at www.thechurch.to.